Truth is making a comeback. America's Top Stories with Lisa K. Donner. Tensions and tariffs alike continue to rise as the trade war with China escalates. The U.S. has increased the duties on $200 billion worth of Chinese imports from 10 to 25 percent. China's reaction? Higher tariffs on $60 billion worth of U.S. goods ranging from 5 to 25 percent. President Trump seems optimistic, but many congressional Republicans feel the tariffs have got to go. Who will blink first in this economic game of chicken? When the dust settles, who will emerge the winner and at what cost? Joining me now are Liberty Nation's managing editor, Mark Angelides. Welcome, Mark. Thanks for having me on board, Lisa. And Andrew Moran, Ellen's economic correspondent. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you for having me. All right, so tariffs against Chinese products obviously make them more expensive to the American consumer. We know that. But they also make American-made goods more appealing. Ultimately, Andrew, which do you think benefits the average American more? The boost in U.S. production and jobs or just cheaper stuff? There is a reason why you can't have both. Uh, the U.S. economy is a pretty vi has a pretty vibrant manufacturing sector. This, everyone thinks that because the Chinese are producing everything and the U.S. imports hundreds of billions of dollars every year that the U.S. doesn't produce anything. But if you look at the numbers, the U.S. produces aerospace technology and exports a lot of professional business services. Uh, a lot of people have this idea that in order to be a manufacturing uh, economy that you have to produce t-shirts, you have to produce snow globes. Uh, this was actually a lot of libertarians that make fun of Bernie Sanders uh, several years ago because he, he was a upset that he went to the Washington gift shop and he saw that snow globes were made in China. Uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, you relying on a foreign country to produce items like that. It's better than having a sweatshop that he did, you know, 60, 70 years ago. Mark, there's a lot of concern about this trade war might hurt the American consumer. But what about China? You spent 10 years in China. A big part of the president's optimism comes from the trade imbalance. Far more Chinese goods come to the U.S. than the other way around. So uh, who has more to lose here, Mark, U.S. or China? Um, it, it's a tough one, but in the long run, I think probably China. Um, the reason being is when we talk about American manufacturing and products made in America, they're made in America. That, that's where they come from. But when we talk about products made in China, that's not the the root place where they cut where many of the things come from china's moving away from uh, it's moved away from agriculture now it's moving away from manufacturing um, and, and a lot of the chinese companies they outsource this stuff to other countries specifically at the moment vietnam's the big place for it especially for fabrics and things um so what's happening is they're going to have to renegotiate all of their supply chain and, and this is a major major issue uh, because there's got to be renegotiations for every price along down the line and, and nobody seems to take that into account. Um, and a, another key factor, we may notice, um, I'm sure we'll talk about this in a moment with the stock markets, but the, uh, the Shanghai Stock Exchange, from what we can gather, this is being held up by the Chinese government at the moment. They're trying to, to rally the stock market in their favor. Um, and this is only a short term solution. So. Um, both sides will hurt for a while, but I think uh, China's probably going to get the worst of it. All right, Andrew, your thoughts on that? Uh, well, China, uh, the, the Chinese company is plunging right now, but there, there has been some rebound lately because of uh, monetary stimulus and fiscal stimulus by the People's Bank of China. The, the U.S. economy, there's a lot of volatility in the U.S. stock market uh, because because the uh, tariffs affect high, affect prices. When you have tariffs, it raises prices, and therefore it could affect sales, and therefore it could impact corporate earnings. So a lot of investors fear that the, the longer the trade war uh, it lingers, then you're going to have you know the Dow Jones plunging 600 points because some retail company couldn't sell enough because they had to raise prices on on you know on on a pair of jeans or whatever that whatever is uh, imported from China. Okay, Andrew, if the uh, trade war continues to escalate, how can we expect financial markets to react? And what should we expect for the American economy in general? Should we expect a net positive or a net negative? Or uh, should it all balance out in the end? And Mark does make a good point. The Chinese are propping up what's going on in Shanghai, whereas in America, that's not happening. Well, one of the reasons why President Donald Trump wants to wants the Federal Reserve to slash interest rates because he knows that the cheap money would, would be funneled into the stock market and therefore it could somehow 
uh, be able to manage any any uh, any negative effects for, from the from the trade war. Uh, when it comes to China, it, there's only st- there's only so much stimulus that, that they can have. Same with the fe- with, same with the Federal Reserve system. So the American economy, you're already seeing higher prices, and you know they're able to sustain itself because of the fiscal stimulus by President Trump. You know he cut taxes, he cut regulations, so he prepared himself. For this trade war, and the U.S. is able to uh, to enable and is able to manage itself properly because of all the stimulus that the White House has has put forward. Mark, um, I'm not entirely convinced that uh, when you say that uh, China has only a limited amount to put into the uh, actual economy, um, I'm quite familiar with the, the the Chinese economic system, and what happens is that uh, this money literally just gets printed out on mass. But then it gets loaned out specifically. A large percentage of it is earmarked for the big four, the, Ch- the four major Chinese banks, which are state-owned in part. And, and then they have an obligation to receive the money to loan these out to other state-owned enterprises, um, who are the people who, by and large, own many of these international uh, export companies, manufacturing companies. So th- these are actually government industries that are being hurt by the tariffs. And the only way they can get out of it is by double dipping. So they're taking a hit on the production, but they're also taking a hit from the the money that they're loaning out that's never going to be paid back. Uh, and this is a very dangerous thing for their economy. And they can keep keep pumping more money in, but it's just going to keep hurting them even more because it's hurting them twice. If you look at actually a lot of a lot of the state-owned enterprises in China, they're actually crumbling. Uh, they're failing. The provincially provincially owned firms that specialize, let's say, in iron, they're closing their doors. Uh, and also the, with the there's a there's a huge corporate uh, default happening in China. You already had uh, thousands of company, uh, hun- excuse me, hundreds of companies file for bankruptcy because of the huge default they're having on on the on the junk bond market and and the on, and, and in the bo- uh, public bond market. So Chinese companies are suffering too, and U.S. companies are going to suffer as well. I mean, taxpayers are, are is a tariff is a tax. So you're having a lot of companies uh, having to raise prices, and therefore you're having uh, so let's say for instance you're saving forty thousand manufacturing jobs uh but then there's gonna be a huge offset in the loss of uh, automobile jobs right now for instance there was a four uh, there was 20,000 job losses in the auto sector last year so you're you're having an, an imbalance on on the, on the labor market too you're you're misdirecting resources you're mister you're misallocating all the necessary all the necessary money so it costs nine hundred thousand dollars per manufacturing job. It costs five hundred thousand dollars to save every job in general from the trade war. So both sides are, are suffering as well. And you know the the as I said the corporate uh, default rate in, in China is exacerbating and the numbers in, in the US are, are surging as well. Yeah the junk bond market in the US is, is on the verge of popping also let me just slip in here mark you wrote about the concerns of the world uh, economy some suggest that the tariffs will actually hurt the global economy you're in the uk so you understand a little bit about the global economy that's apparently bad for globalism but could it just be another part of the president's plan to make america great again um yeah it's mostly you get this from uh, politicians and uh, and finance spokesmen for the government who are saying that this is damaging to the global economy. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing for individual countries. Uh, so for example, uh, let's say America, um, if, they have, uh, if they're having issues with getting a proper balance with China, then this means that the, the manufacturers or, or the, the, the end product manufacturers within America might start diversifying where they're actually sourcing their things from. You see, as I mentioned earlier, China gets most of its base manufacturing from Vietnam because the uh, the running costs are low, the wages are low. There's no reason why America can't just go straight to Vietnam and start doing it this way. It's actually it's a good thing for America, but for the overall world economy, uh, it, it's such an interconnected web that it, it makes um, in, investors very shaky. But American investors if they're putting their money into American companies and American companies start to diversify where they're getting their things from, that that's a good thing for America. But where do you think China is putting the U.S. dollars? I mean, obviously, when when the U.S. buys uh, Chinese goods, how what what is what is China going to do with all those dollars? What they do with those dollars that they reinvest that and that money into the, into the U.S. into the U.S. economy? They buy China, they buy American companies, they buy American goods. So there there is why is the trade deficit so bad? Tell me why is the trade deficit awful? 
I mean, we, everyone has a trade deficit. You have a trade deficit with your supermarket. You have a trade deficit with your dentist. You have a trade deficit with any any company you do business with. Unless unless you're selling a product to them, you have a trade deficit. So why? I need to know why a trade deficit is so, so terrible. Um, it's it's not necessarily a, a good or a bad thing. It depends on the individual players and what their priorities are at the time. So, for example, if you've got somebody who's uh, trying to create more of a manufacturing base within their own country, that then applying tariffs is going to be good because it's going to encourage the, uh, the the people within that country to invest in in local manufacturing or, or trying to to rejig their supply chains so they can make a better profit within the country. Um, but of course, I mean that there's bad things and there's good things about a trade imbalance. It just depends on what your focus is. Uh, I think what uh, Donald Trump's particular focus is it is jobs. So as you say, Andrew, it's cost like nine hundred thousand to bring back a. Uh, uh, an automobile manufacturing job is that right? Nine hundred thousand. A steel steel manufacturing job. Steel like manufacturing. Five hundred thousand for jobs in general. Okay, so this it seems like a, a huge number, but that's a job in an industry that's going to carry on further and further. It's, it's an investment in the future. It's an infrastructure investment because once that person retires, there's still going to be that job. Now this will change, obviously, with technology, uh, and the jobs will change, but these are investments for the future. But you're already seeing automation impacting the steel manufacturing jobs. You're, you're seeing just uh, uh, you know, uh, steel mill plants with hardly any any human employees. So you're, you're not really benefiting anybody. If you look at the latest numbers from the uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, I think it was last month, the overall manufacturing uh, net gain was four four thousand. But if you compare that to professional financial services, for, uh, I think it was twenty seven thousand. So the tariffs aren't really benefiting, aren't making a drastic uh, increase in, in the number of manufacturing jobs back in the United States. Sure, but it's, it's very much a trickle down, isn't it? So that, uh, it comes in that maybe the jobs aren't in a particular steel factory, but then the, the steel becomes cheaper to the people who use it because people don't just have big blocks of steel uh, just sitting around. They're used for things. They're used it in construction. They're used in, in all sorts of stuff. Uh, and if the price is cheaper, doesn't that mean that uh, this is part of the trickle down economy? More money can go for more, more workers within these different uh, various fields. Uh, and then that trickles back into the economy because there's more workers, more people paying things into the economy by buying products. But that's incorrect about steel prices coming down because uh, when when you block off uh, foreign competition or foreign imports, that steel uh, the, the the steel producers they have uh, they they can raise the price as much as they want because they have less competition. So after uh, Trump announced the steel tariffs on China, steel prices surged, steel prices skyrocketed. So I haven't seen the data to show that steel prices have come down. All right, let me just say this, Andrew, let's look, uh, or let's move into the politics of this. Finally, we have an issue where Chuck Schumer and Donald Trump agree. So what's so bad about that? Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty terrified when you have a Chuck Schumer who said that the intelligence community can destroy uh, President Trump seven ways from Sunday, and then I'm scared when President Trump, you know, Completely, uh, continually lambast the Democrats on a daily basis, rightfully so. That's terrifying. But bipartisanship isn't actually a good thing. Uh, when Republicans and Democrats come together, it's usually to you know hurt the American people or somehow you know take from their pockets or you know regulate their lives. So that's not really a good thing. Uh, and also, when it comes to the Republican Party, they're pretty split on uh, President Trump's trade war. If you look at Justin Amash, um, he. Poked, he continually pokes fun at uh, President Trump's calling himself tariff man. He calls him a liberty man, and he points out all the data that uh, he points out the data how, uh, how the higher prices, how uh, Americans are the ones paying for the tariffs. You know, because uh, for instance, uh, President Trump releases, recently said that China has paid uh, through the nose all the tariffs, but China hasn't paid for anything. American importers are the ones who pay for the levies, and then of course that creates the 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 chain where uh, that keeps the the prices get uh, passed on to the consumer. Uh, so the Republican Party is split. Democrats, I'm not really sure where they stand on the issue because all all they ever do is attack Trump on every every iota of what he does. So uh, the bipartisanship, I'm not I'm not really uh, I'm not really enthusiastic about it. All right, Mark, I'm going to give you the last word. And this is, uh, uh, you spent a decade at least in China. From what you know about the Chinese, do you think they're going to blink? Hmm, the, the people on the street, not at all. The, the people who run the, the small to medium sized enterprises, small to medium sized businesses, it's not really going to make a, a major difference for them. Um, I, I know a lot of people uh, in the textile industries uh, and their customers are American, but really they're just, many of these places they're just middlemen they're the 
production, the manufacturing happens in other countries and, and they just send it through uh, through ports. That That's really all it is, ports and lading. Um, so most people are not going to blink. Um, the government, yes, very much so. Number one, because it's a, it's a bit of a, a problem for their face, their, um, their, their outward appearance of somebody's involved in, in a confrontation with us uh, and they'll want to get that solved as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, Chinese government, yes, it's a problem. People on the street, not so much. All right, thank you both. Andrew Moran, hailing from Toronto, Canada, and Mark Angelides from the UK. Thanks so much for joining us today on Truth is Making a Comeback. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you for having me. Truth is Making a Comeback. Visit us at libertynation.com.